Hello. In this Java tutorial, we're going to be learning about getter methods and setter methods. These are also called accessor methods and mutator methods, respectively. Before watching this video, you're going to want to have a general understanding of how objects and classes work. And to learn more about that, please click on the video link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. In this video, we're going to learn about four things. First, we're going to review field variables. Second, we're going to discuss the reason for having getter and setter methods. Third, we're going to learn how to write getter and setter methods. And finally, we're going to see getter and setter methods working in a live code demonstration. Here we have a class student with two fields. The first one, student ID is an instance variable, also known as a non-static field. And we know it's non-static because it doesn't have the word static here. Now instance variables can have a different value for each instance of student. And that's what we want, because a student ID should have a different value for each student. Down here we have a static field, also known as a class variable. And we know it's a static field because it says static here. Now this value mascot, since it's a class variable, will have the same value across all instances of student. This variable belongs to the class. Now we can change the value, but it changes it everywhere. You'll notice that we haven't set a value for either of these variables. With local variables, we'd have to give it a value before we accessed it. But fields will set their own values if we don't set it for them. So this one is an int, so it'll automatically default to zero. This one's a string. A string is a type of object, and all object fields will default to null. If you want to learn more about what null means, check in the video in the upper right hand corner of this screen. These are marked private, and what that means is that we can access these fields inside the student class, but we can't access them outside the student class directly. Now we do this because it makes it harder to accidentally change the value but it means we need to have an indirect way to access them from another class, and we do that using getter and setter methods. So let's create our first getter method. You see we've named it get student ID because student ID is the field we are trying to return the value of. It's got a return type of int. The return type has to be the same as the data type of the field we're trying to get. Non-static fields like student ID can only be accessed by non-static methods. So we have to make sure get student ID is non-static. We know get student ID is non-static because it doesn't have the word static in the method declaration. And we make it public so we can access it from other classes. Next we'll create a setter method. So this one is going to be set student ID. We have to pass it a value and we're going to use that value to change the value of the field student ID. So I've called mine new student ID. You can call it whatever you want. Of course, this parameter has to be the same data type as the field. It's a void method because we're not returning anything. And again, it's very simple. We're just setting the field student ID equal to our parameter new student ID. Now let's make a getter for the mascot field. So mascot is a static field. So traditionally, we make getters and setters for static fields static. We wouldn't have to, but it makes it a little easier to access. So we're going to again say public static. Mascot is a string, so we're returning a string, and we're saying get mascot. And all we do is say return the value of the mascot variable. Next, we'll make a setter method for mascot. So we'll say public static. It's a void method because we're not returning anything. We're going to call it set mascot. And we need to pass it a new value, so we're making a parameter, string, new mascot. And we're setting the mascot field equal to the parameter, new mascot. Next, let's compress this all down so we have a little more room. So here we've still got our fields. We've got our methods here, though we've hidden the bodies, just so we have this room here. Now we're going to add a second class, the high school class. This would have to be in a different file, but for illustrative purposes, we're going to have it on the same screen. We're going to add a stack and a heap so we can trace exactly what's going on in memory. If you want to learn more about how stacks and heaps work with variables and objects, 
please click on the video in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Next, we're going to add a main method to our high school class. And then our first line of code is we're going to declare a student Priya and have it pointed a new student. So we're going to put the reference variable Priya on the stack and it's going to point to a new student object on the heap. So you can see the instance variables are in the instance of the student class here, student ID. This defaulted to zero because int fields default to zero if we don't give them a value. And we notice our class variable we've got up here. And that's because we only have one copy of the class variable, so we're going to keep it separate. And the class variable is mascot. And since mascot is a string, which is an object, objects always default to null if we don't give them a value. Next, we're going to declare a new student variable, Andre, and have it point at a new instance of the student class. So we've added a new instance here, and again, it's got its own copy of the instance variable, student ID. Next, we're going to call the setMascot method from the Andre instance variable. Now, setMascot is a static method, so that means we could call it from Andre, we could call it from Priya, or, since it's a static method, we could actually call it from the class itself student. So we change the value of the mascot field to Duke. Next, we're going to call Andre.setStudentID. SetStudentID is a non-static method, so we would have to call it from an instance. We'd have to call it from either Andre or Priya. So we're going to set the student ID of the object Andre is pointing at to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, we're going to create a variable, int Andre ID on the stack, and we're going to set it equal to whatever gets returned when we call get student ID from the object Andre is pointing at. So Andre is pointing at an object with a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for student ID. So we're going to end up setting Andre ID equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, we're going to do the same thing with the Priya. So int Priya ID equals whatever was returned when we call get student ID from the object Priya is pointing at. So the student ID for the object Priya is pointing at is zero. So we're going to set Priya ID equal to zero. Here we're going to system out print line whatever gets returned when we call get mascot from Andre. So it doesn't really matter where we call get mascot from because get mascot is always going to return the class variable mascot and that's going to equal Duke for wherever we call it from. So this is going to print out Duke. Next, we're going to system out print line get mascot when we call it from the student class. Get mascot, as we said before, is a static method. So we can call it from an instance or from the class itself. So get mascot will again return the value of the class variable mascot, which is Duke. So this will again print out Duke. So there you have an example of tracing some getter and setter methods and seeing how it behaves in memory. To continue on to the next video in the sequence, click on the video link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, click on the video link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. And to subscribe to the channel, click on the picture here. Please leave me a comment if you learned something from the video or you want to tell me what you'd like to learn about next. And if you found the video useful, please hit the like button.